Hey everyone, so today we got a 60 by 32 slab with a little 8 by 8 bump out there for a boiler room. About a 5.5 inch thick slab with a thickened edge, about a 12 inch edge. Got styrofoam down, radiant heat down. Styrofoam's, you know, to keep the heat in the slab. Got the thermal brake here on the edge, the 2 inches of styrofoam on the edge for the thermal brake. And then when we pull the form off these screws here are to hold the styrofoam onto the edge of the slab two rows of number four rebar here so this is what we're pouring today it's about 40 yards 60 by 32. hey guys mike here thanks for stopping by everything about concrete my channel's all about concrete stuff. We pour all different types of concrete work. Today we're pouring a big insulated house slab. Now the concrete we're pouring for this slab is just a basic 3500 PSI mix. It's got fiber mesh in it. It's got water reducer in it. So we can pour a pretty loose slump. We can pour up to about a 7 slump with that water reducer in here with no problem at all. The slab itself is formed with 2x12s. It's got two inches of styrofoam underneath it and up the edges. And the styrofoam is to insulate the slab. It's got radiant heat tubing in it. Those white tubes are PEX tubes that uh, hot water is going to go through and heat the slab. And that's going to end up being the heating source for the house. So we pour a ton of these slabs in Maine. I mean, a lot of people heat their houses with uh, radiant tubing, radiant heated floors in Maine. And that's what this this one's all about. Now the homeowner is actually the heating and plumbing specialist. And he's here on the job. You might see him in the video a little bit later. But he's the one that did all the, he actually did the form work on this. Got it all prepped. Did all the wire, all the tubing. And if you're wondering why we're not pulling the wire up, is because the wire is in there to hold the tubing in place. To hold it nice and straight. Keep it from... Uh, rising up into the slab the the heating guys the heating specialist guys here in Maine they like the, the radiant tubing right at the bottom of the slab they don't want it in the middle they don't want it at the top they want it at the bottom so that's why we leave it right at the bottom um, you guys that want to do it differently that's perfectly fine but that's not the way it's done here in Maine and we do we pour radiant heated floors here every single week Literally every week here in Maine we do a ton of them and they're all done this way. So they must be pretty efficient if, if they're all done this way. Now we're using a MBW Screed Demon uh, power screed today. So you're going to get be able to check this out. Battery powered. This one works really, really well. It helps screed the floors. Makes our job a lot easier. So check this out. Little screen demon action going this morning, battery powered, MBW. You know how quiet that thing is. Barely hear it. That is literally how quiet that thing is. It barely makes any noise at all. Now, if you've ever run one of these, you've probably run a gas-powered one, and you know that the gas-powered ones are pretty, they're pretty noisy. Um, this one's a ton different. This one works really, really good on slumps that are, I'd say, between a four slump and a seven slump, probably a five and a six. It works really, really good on. You can see how much effort Luke's putting into that to have to screed that. He, there's barely any effort at all needed to get that screeded. And that board works really good. That shape board that they have works really good on concrete. It doesn't want to sink in the concrete really. I mean, you want to keep you want to keep some pressure back on that. Keep it moving backwards. You don't want to stop while it's vibrating. But as far as the board goes, that's one of the best ones I've used. I've used a ton of those power screeds over the years. 
Um, this is definitely one of my favorites. There is a link for that down in the description, guys, if you want to check that out, see what it is, see how, see how, see how much it costs. But that's the first truck. This, like I said in, in the beginning of the video, this, this is about a 40-yard slab. So if we're talking a little bit of money here, you know, if we're talking a little bit about making money and how much things cost, 40 yards, when I figure a slab, I figure it at about 100 and the cost of the concrete at about 140 bucks a yard. So right there, you're talking about 5,600 bucks just for the concrete alone. And then when I do the forming on something like this, if I do the forming and the insulation and the rebar and the wire, I'm going to be at about two bucks a square foot just to do that. And then if you want to add the styrofoam, the styrofoam is extra. So about two bucks a square foot for the forming, the wire, and the rebar. And then about another 250 to do the styrofoam. And that includes the cost of the styrofoam too. So we're at $4.50 a square foot just to get this thing formed up and ready for concrete. And that doesn't include the, the gravel work. That's always done separate up here. You never know what type of ground you're going to get into, so it's hard just to put like a flat square foot price on, on the subgrade level and the gravel level. It's always going to be priced individually and priced separately. So as far as the actual form work and the slab work, so 450 for the form work in the, in the styrofoam to get it ready. And then the pour and finish... You know, it, you can expect to pay somebody like me anyways from a dollar a square foot to pour and finish to two dollars a square foot. So right in that general range for the lab, just the labor to pour, finish, and then saw your expansion joints. So that's going to get you up to, you know, and, th and then when you add the cost of the concrete per square foot, you got about two dollars and fifty to three dollars a square foot there. So, you know, you're talking. You're talking about nine or ten bucks a square foot just to get a slab like this done. <clears throat> that and that's where the gravel graded really, really good. If uh, you you know if we show up and the subgrades a mess, either either we'll try to make it work somehow by raking it out a little bit ourselves, or if it's too bad, we'll just turn around and, and call the people we're working for and say, "There's Jim right there, the owner on the right." Um, We'll call the owner and say, hey, you got to get that guy back to fix it. Uh, subgrade's a mess. It's nowhere near level. When we show up on a job like this, 60 by 32, to set forms and everything, we want that subgrade to be within about an inch. Nowhere is worse than an inch out of level. And if it is, then, you know, well, what are you paying the excavator for? You're paying him to get it level. <laughs> he should have a laser. It shouldn't be that hard to get the dirt within an inch with a laser I don't think if, if we got to get our concrete you know within a an eighth of an inch let's say over a floor this size when we're using a laser then you should be able to get the dirt pretty level I think so we're able to screed about 90 some odd percent of this slab with that screed demon and then around the pipes and stuff we'll use a small hand screed to get around them just quicker and faster just to use something smaller around those <laughs> got Darren running it now it makes it easy when everybody can run the, the power screen too and they all know what they're doing because anybody can just pick it up and go we don't have to wait for that one person just to do all the screening and on 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 my crew you know my guys they don't really care who does what they just want to get it done they want to get the concrete in as fast as we can as accurate as we can as good as we can but nobody really cares who's doing what it's just a matter of it's just getting done yeah there's that smaller screed you can see I'm using around those pipes that's probably about a six slump we're pouring there today three-quarter inch rock in that we never pour anything with the uh, rock larger than three-quarter of an inch our mixes are all either three-eighths or three-quarter or they're a blend if we ask for a blend like a 50 50 blend they'll blend it for us you can see now Luke's running it 
<laughs> I think I ran it in the beginning, maybe just for a minute, maybe not. I can't remember on this one, but um, actually doing the puddling behind the screen is the hard part, guys. So. Just finishing up, 60 by 32 slab with an 8 by 8. We're going to get that magged out, get the rest of this bolt loaded, then it's just sitting here waiting for it to dry so we can power trial it.